Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Wealth of Nations is an interesting game for me. As, as someone who has a background in economics, I found The Wealth of Nations, which is a very popular book by Adam Smith, I found this to be something that I kind of had a pull to or kind of reached out to me. And I do like this game quite a bit. I first, I played it like really when I first got into the hobby and I was kind of mesmerized by it. I was like, this is really good. But you fast forward now to when I play it and the tune has changed just a little bit. Here's a few things. The game is kind of drab to look at. It's very boring. It's very nuts and bolts. And that's kind of a turnoff and was a turnoff there. The game is also overly long. This is going to be a big, long economic slog and it's going to turn some people off the game is rather complicated in what you're doing it's abstract how you're putting those tiles out but it all works brilliantly i just think it's done better in power grid and a better game if you will although man if you want to teach economics yeah you can keep you can use power grid to teach supply and demand absolutely but this one does a really good job of teaching economics and the symbiotic relationship between different people and the markets fantastic in that regard just wish it looked better i wish it was shorter and streamlined and i look forward to a new edition of this at some point in the future if it ever comes out now you know, it's so complicated that the game tells you when you're trading with other people what the values of those trades should be because there's so much to compute. And you don't want to get done with, well, also it's for a dollar. Nope, 20, 2, 19. You know, the, the game tells you this is what it should sell for. And if they're not willing to sell it to you for that, here's what you can buy it for a little bit more from the bank, the supply. So that kind of helps out and makes the game and streamlines it and makes it a little bit easier to get through. Otherwise, you know, this is almost like an outdated game. If this game would have came out in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, I feel like, or any time in the 80s, it would have been like Game Busters. The Avalon Hill series, I feel like this would have fit right into those masterpieces. But I feel like in this day and age, this game has just been passed by. And it really does hurt me to say that because I'm the target audience almost for this game. I do need something that looks a little bit better. The pieces are just, the components are just not up to par. It's, it's hard to be too critical of that because this is an older game that came out in a different period. And I know people say, well, he didn't like it because it didn't look very good. Nah, not really, because there's a lot that I like about it. Just not, I mean, when you have all these games, all these games being released, and a bunch of economic games that are being released, I feel like, yes, it isn't as good as this. Those other games may not be as detailed as this, but I can get the, the meat of it in a much quicker package, which isn't always good. I'm not saying that, but in this case, I think it is because you're doing the same thing over and over again. It just takes so long to get to the point. Lawrence of Arabia is a fantastic movie. It's really, really good. And when you sit down to watch it, you're like, wow, this is a masterpiece and things are going on. But we can all admit that it's a little bit slow, maybe a little bit too slow, right? And it just doesn't hold up as well if you just got to the point. Now, I'm not advocating for like the new movie Rise of Skywalker, where it's just things are just happening so quickly. There's a happy medium in there. And I feel like this airs on the side of maybe something that would have happened in the past that you don't see as much anymore. And you can just kind of trim that fat out. And I hope that they do. So for me, this is still one that I can recommend to some people, but it's going to be a niche matter of fact where I am going to purge this game for myself. It was a game that if I would have reviewed this 10 years ago, I would have loved that now maybe we just aren't right for each other any longer. So a purge. Here's Wealth of Nations by Table Star Games, game of industrial production and international trade. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? So when you open it up, you get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. These are gonna be, these are paper thin, wow. Uh, these player aids that will kind of tell you what's going on in the game, the different phases, etc. But these are super thin. So I guess they're okay, they just sit on the table, but yeah. It's going to be the financial markets where you put the dominations, the automation tokens, and the financial market, the promissory notes will be here. So this kind of lays on the board. A little bit better quality than what you got there. You're going to have a board. Now this board is going to wow you. Look at this. Wealth of Nations. Doesn't that just make you want to play this game? Very boring. Board, okay quality. The components are not that great in this box. This is the supply that you'll be using. Now these have indentions on them so things can kind of sit on them and not fall. 
But these are the, like the little markets that you'll have for each of the areas that will be on the board and what they're pricing. What's really cool about this, it kind of tells you what the market price should be. So in this case, you can see a 24, so you know if you're in this range that a 24 is about the price that you should be utilizing it for. And a whole bunch of cubes and these little cheap little tiles. And then inside of this, I have the Super Industry tiles, the official expansion. It all fits inside there. So this is kind of what you get. Generic, generic, you're gonna have some more tiles. That you will see here, these tiles have these little dots on them. And you have paper money inside, and these little chits that you'll be using throughout. The components really are nothing to write home about. They're okay, but not great. Here is the rule book. I really like this hammer with this guy's arm on it. It's really cool and striking. A list of the components over here. This is very good, especially for how early this game came out. An overview and a look of how things go. Then we have producing, industrial blocks, and then the setups. So this is just kind of like all like terms and things that you need to know to learn a game, kind of concepts in the game. Then you're gonna have setup over here. The starting packages, this is still setup and how things go uh, based on the number of players that you're playing with over here. Finally, we're to where the game starts. The trading phase and how that will be played out. Some tips when you're going through here, particularly bartering. It's gonna be very, very important in this game. You have the develop phase that you'll go through and the production phase that you'll have in the game. Finally, ending with the winners here. And a little bit about the different countries that are in here, but there's no national powers in this or anything like that. Then the back of it is a little cheat sheet about how things go, the different phases in the game. It's pretty helpful when you start moving through the game. So the rulebook really didn't have a whole lot of problems with it. This game can bog down a little bit, but it's not because of the rules. So I don't have a ton of room here to show you how the game is played, but when you set the game up, you're gonna put each of these boards kind of around it. That way you can signify where everything is at. Now I'm gonna break this down because I just wanna teach you a little bit about the game and show you how it's played. So I'm gonna get this set up and then we'll move forward. And here's the supply all set up. So you're gonna have all the cubes on here and the extras here and then the tiles. And you'll do this for each of the markets. They'll all be set up. They're all gonna work exactly the same, but they'll have different prices and things about when you barter. So you'll put these aside so the board will be surrounded by all these little different markets. So there's a few concepts in the game you kind of have to understand. This is a complete dot. This is a partial dot. If I were to put this here, and these two were connected, I would have one, two, three dots, and a bunch of partial dots that would be on here. So let's say it was like this, it'd be one, two, three dots, and that's what you're kind of trying to fix up. So during the game, you have something set up like this, we have one, two, three, four dots. Now these wouldn't make a dot. Now nobody in their right mind would place it like that. You would place it like that and get the fifth dot. But there may be reasons in the game why you would have to place it like that or cut it off. So you just cut whatever dots are on there. Now as the game produces, you will start to create and you will have ownership of these blocks by putting these little flags on it for your flag. And this would showcase that I own this block of tiles here. And you can definitely, if you so wanted to, let's say you were in a situation like this, or maybe you would put multiple flags on here just to showcase your ownership of that area. And that would showcase that this player owns these three blocks. So during the production, each of these blocks and the block itself will need to be fed and receive power. So each tile in order to produce will require one food and the entire block will require one energy. So in this case, I have to give up three food and one energy to produce the one, two, three, four red cubes. Keeping in mind that each resource will have its own market for what things cost. So you're buying and selling based on the market that's provided. And you'll be able to get more of these cube or tiles that come off and these cubes based on the market provided. Your goal during the game is to earn the most victory points. You earn four victory points for each industry tile and one VP for every $10 that you have. If you're at the debt at the end of the game, it will cost you VPs. You'll lose three points for every promissory note. So to start the game, you would only get the starting labor that would be set up. So the, the extra would go down into the supply and you would know that the cost would be in this vicinity, 1713. If you want this is a starting labor that you would have here, you can kind of see what it is, 17 to buy, 13 to sell. 
you would kind of know what the market is going for right now. So this is easier for me just to show you in the book. There's little packages that you have here. Players will choose an industry package and a commodity package to try to get the game set up. So they're gonna give you different things that you can have here. So what you will do is you will choose these packages in a snake order. So somebody will choose either an industry or commodity package, one, two, three, four, they would go four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, until everything is taken and you're ready to start the game. So the first thing you're gonna do is what's called the trade phase. And that's where players in turn order will go around, either can buy, sell, or barter and trade with the other players. So if you do one thing, if I bartered with player three, that would be my act, my trade action. The trade phase is gonna end when everybody passes in succession. So you can keep going one at a time until you're done doing what you wanna do. Now some of the things you can do, which are very, very easy, I'll bring the board over here so you can see this. You can buy or sell. If I wanted to sell, say I had a red cube and I wanted to sell it, I would get $13 for it. If I wanted to buy one from the market, it would cost me $17. And that's how that works. Now there are numbers in between. So if it was set up like this, you would know that if I'm bartering with somebody, the value of this is about 15. So this kind of tells you what you should go. So you're not bartering from a place of not knowing, but it kind of tells you what you should be going for. You don't have to stick to it, but it's definitely a possibility. The second phase of the game is the develop. So after you're done trading, you can do a few things or five possible things. I can put a flag out signifying this is now my location where I could build. I could also build an industry tile. So if I wanted to put an industry tile out, I could do so on a location where I have a flag. Now, each type of industry tile has a different cost. So you're gonna build a farm, it's gonna cost you a white and black cube. If you wanna build a purple, it will cost you a blue, white, and black. So you have to pay the cost in order to do so. If you wanna just put a flag down, it would just cost you a red cube. So all of the costs are right here on your player aid. You can also move the industry tiles by spinning one of these black capital cubes. Then you can move up to three of these into a different location. You may do that because you wanna position things differently on the board to your best interest. The next thing you can do is automate. And that's why you put these tiles down on one of your cubes. You must spend two capital and one energy in order to automate that. What that's gonna allow you to do is you can still pay the food and energy in order to activate those places during the production phase, or you can spend an ore and an energy. And this will allow you to automate and possibly be able to activate these at a cheaper price, especially if the food price has gone up. This will allow you to substitute ore for food. The third thing you do will be to produce. And each of the player aid will tell you here that they also cost an energy, but each type may be able to take different stuff. So like a food here, or if you automate it, you would spend the ore, and it would give you what you have coming out of it. So you wanna be very careful about this. You wanna make sure you have the correct resources, that way you can produce, just like I showed you earlier. You know, normally what it would be if you wanted to produce here, one food and one energy to do that. Normally, this one over here with the three, would cost three food and an energy, and you could produce all of that, but you have an automation, so you can do an ore and an energy here. And then you will get these cubes that you will add to your supply in order to do bigger and better things in the future. Now keep in mind, whenever you produce, always goes into the supply, not into the market. Anything that you get would come from the supply, not from the market. The market's only used in the trade phase. So there's two things going on here, the trade phase where the market's being manipulated and the supply that you have here. The game can end in one of three ways. One, you just place all of their flags. All 18 of your flags are on the board. Every hex on the board is completed or five out of the six different types of industry stacks have run out. So there's no more tiles under five of these six. It's gonna be a little bit of a long game, be prepared for that. Then you score up the victory points. Whoever has the most is your winner. Who should buy this game? I think this game is going to be definitely for economic fans. If you want a heavy economic game, absolutely. I think that if you don't mind the way components or things look, yep, you're gonna have a winner on your hands and you don't mind a long game. If those things come together for you, 
this will be something that you would enjoy. For me, I've outgrown it. It's a perk. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep